Hey guys, I'm Jay Bates. This is Sean Stone. What's up? And another episode of I Get Email. Today's question is from Richard Spencer. He says, I just moved from California to Texas and I get to restart my entire shop. I wanted to ask you if you could go back and lay out your current shop, what order would you build things? And quite honestly, I've never rearranged my shop. So we'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, there's a lot that goes into um, laying out a shop, and hopefully we can give you guys some little tips and tricks of what has worked and what hasn't worked in the order of doing so. So right off the bat, do you have anything that first comes to your mind of starting a brand new shop? Don't build interior walls. There you go. I was not expecting that. Don't build interior walls. So yeah, when I first met Sean, his shop had a bump out for a bathroom, which is still there. Which is still there. And then a bump out for a dust collection closet. Air compressor. It was just a closet to house those things. And also a sheet goods storage area, which I ended up not needing. Yeah. So on paper, that might, may sound enticing to have a specific little small room or closet to house air compressor, dust collector, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But why did you tear it down? Well, the reason I tore it down was because I didn't have, I didn't leave myself any room to work or walk. So when I was planning the shop and I had all this on paper, you know, I gave myself two or three feet, you know, I could walk and work in those little areas, but I did, you don't take in consideration. You've got a shop vac sitting here. You've got that sitting there. You've got a shop stool, you've got this. And so everything just kind of gets in the way. And so I just had to take it down. Yeah. Not only with uh, the space inside that closet or whatever, but when you put a wall, you are guaranteed to restrict space into your shop. So it's not like you have something on a cart that can be moved around as needed. Uh, you're, you're guaranteeing a long-term restriction. Yeah. With a room, you, you're, you're going to have some wasted space because when you put walls up, I mean, there's already, you know, three to four inches all the way around that is just wasted. Yeah. So... so. I've changed my shop around quite a bit, and as you guys know, uh, probably know, I've every time, it's not just because I like moving stuff and dusting underneath it as much as my wife wishes that was the case. Um, I think that the, the reason is, is there's always little one thing that's bugging me, one little thing that could be improved upon, mm -hmm. maybe a bump out, maybe a wall or, or whatever is in, is in your way. And I am not afraid of, of a couple hours of hard work moving stuff around, and it, you know what, if it doesn't work, it just goes back to the way, the way it was. That's not, that's not a concern with me. But if you can keep making incremental changes and then ultimately find something that really, really works, by all means, keep making those incremental changes because they will add up. I've rearranged the shop way more times than what I can ever think of recalling. Uh, think of recalling. That makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, but you well, get my point. I vouch that you have rearranged quite a bit. Yeah, he's, yeah, and you've helped me rearrange. But the thing is, every time I've done so... I've solved some problems and I don't solve every problem at every single time. Although I think, you know, knock on wood here, I think this is pretty much the best it can possibly be in my shop currently. <laughs> well, there, there really is. There's not much I can change because I've gone through so many different iterations. I think I've tried just about everything. So uh, I'll post a picture of an overall view of my shop and I'll tell you what I, th if I had to start over knowing what I know now, um, there's a couple things that I can recommend as far as what has helped me. Number one, have a dedicated work surface, something you're going to work on. That work surface, number two, in my opinion, should be centrally located uh, between every single mm -hmm. tool. That work surface, in my opinion, should be a direct access to every single tool with nothing in between. Because what do you do? You get done with this tool and you typically take your material back to the work surface. You don't go, you don't necessarily take it directly off the miter saw from a rough cut to the jointer, directly off the jointer bed to the planer, directly off the planer bed to the table saw. In between, you go from, I do, I go from the miter saw to the work surface, to the jointer, to the work surface, to the band, uh, planer, to the work surface. And you get my point there. That's so a good point, yeah. <clears throat> if it is centrally located and nothing is in your way, it's just going to help so much. Um, so there, as far as layout, that would be my best advice. Now, you move into your shop tomorrow. It's a clean slate. Same size as what you have now, but you mm -hmm. don't have anything. What's the first thing you do? Build, whatever. Yeah, so I guess the first thing I would build is, is something to work off of, just like you mentioned. Have something to work off of and just branch out from there. Um, so I would think probably an assembly table or <laughs> something like that. Um, 
I, I, that was going to second that at an assembly table because yeah. that's going to be your foundation. And it doesn't have to be like um, the, the cream of the crop, the most amazing assembly table you'll ever have right now. Don't stress out over that. But something to work on mm-hmm. to do other things. Yeah. So, um, and we, we both have larger assembly tables. Uh, and yours, I think, is more convenient to a lot of people because a lot of people like to bundle stuff together. Uh, yours is an outfeed. Yeah, so it's uh, I call it the outfeed assembly table, and so it's got a downdraft table built into it. Uh, so it's and my table saw is but- butted up to it, so it's the outfeed side, and it's also where I assemble everything. But it's got it's got the downdraft. Uh, I've got Jay's router lift built into the table, so it's got a router lift there, uh, and just in my opinion, a ton of storage, which is just important in a shop. Um, and just little things like uh, a place to put your pens and pencils that doesn't need to be on top of the table, whatever. Yeah. If everything has a home, then that's, that's the key, yeah. Then that, it won't be in the way. That's my motto. Everything's got a, a place, and yeah. that's where it needs to stay. So, so. number one, <clears throat> assembly table slash work surface. Uh, I made one as a standalone unit. If you are tight on space and you need to bundle stuff together... Um, I personally prefer having a dedicated assembly and a dedicated outfeed, but I understand everyone's has different space constraints. So mm-hmm. uh, if you are looking for something that bundles a lot of things into once to save some space, uh, we'll have a link down below to his um, his multi outfeed assembly table. Outfeed assembly table. Yeah, it's it's got it's just got so much stuff on it. I just don't know what to call it. It's pretty cool. I've, I've seen it in person. But anyway, uh, after that, what do you do after you have a set dedicated? A, a dedicated work surface, in my opinion, storage. Because mm-hmm. just like we said, if everything has a home, then it's not in your way. If nothing's in your way, then you're more productive and able to get stuff done. Yeah, and just touching on that, you know, you'll have places in the shop that are just wasted space, basically. And so find the find those places in your shop that you really aren't going to be able to access later and just make that storage places. Yeah, I think you took that to the extreme with your outfit table. There's so much little nooks and crannies storage here. It really, there. everything, every crack <laughs> in that table has something on it. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a good storage. I've got a huge wall of storage in my miter saw station. You don't necessarily have to build, although it would be great if you'd build something like that. You don't necessarily have to build a huge storage solution. Just, just think outside the box. I've also got over the garage door storage Um, on both sides of my shop one garage door but think up high too Mm -hmm. you're not going to use this is a 10 foot tall walls or 10 foot ceiling Um, most shops may have eight foot walls or whatever but basically like from here up i'm short that's not high um from as high as you can reach six feet to eight feet whatever it's typically wasted space on the wall think Mm -hmm. of high storage think of storage that's out of the way for stuff that you don't access all the time stuff that may be in your way. If you've got to share a space, then household items that just need a place to live. Uh, yeah, storage. That's number two. And just a couple of things that I will touch on just briefly. But uh, where I needed, I thought I needed a sheet good storage system where I had a full sheet, half sheet, quarter sheets, all these little cubbies to work a store wood. It took up way too much space. And so I think the best place to store lumber and wood is... At the lumber yard. At the lumber yard. And so, you know, I've got a place now where I can keep maybe four to five sheets of plywood and some cutoffs. And then I've got a lumber rack over in a wasted space that's ideal for a lumber rack. Uh, and something else real quick is just uh, mobile bases on everything. Um, I think that is a really good tip for any shop. And I think you'll probably hear that from a lot of people. Just put mobile bases on everything. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if this is if, if woodworking is your full-time gig, if you're sharing space with another with a, with a vehicle, uh, if you don't even have a space and you're just pushing stuff out in the yard. Mobility. That, yeah. It doesn't matter. Mobility. And, and in Jay's situation where he rearranges twice a month, you know, those mobile bases come in handy. <laughs> it's twice a week. <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> uh, anyway, hopefully there's some just some tips or uh, our, our thoughts on getting started and just pushing you in the right direction. If you guys have any other questions, be sure to send us an email, maybe leave us a comment, whatever you guys want to do until next time. We'll see you next, next time. He said, see you next time. <laughs> Later. See you.